My name is TJ Rogers, and I'm taking you on a journey across Canada to meet the people pushing skateboarding in my home country. Let's get it cracking. Our fourth and final stop will be British Columbia, where we will be meeting with Alien and the Kootenays at the infamous Driftopia, and after that we'll be heading down to Vancouver to meet up with Norma, an up-and-coming skate photographer. We're also going to spend some more time with my good homie Mitch Barrett. Mitch has been killing it on the board for years, but most importantly, people don't know the tragic story that he had to survive as a kid and how skateboarding saved his life. And of course, we'll hit the streets one last time before wrapping up this series. What's up guys? We're over at Aliens House, aka Driftopia, and uh, the Kootenays BC. And uh, let's shred the gnar at this dreamland. Oh! Ow! Let's go! <laughs> Alien. I live in Castlegar, BC. Driftopia was like a dream I had. Skatetopia mixed with drift woodworks. We built guitars, we built tables, mini cruiser boards. Pretty much I've been into woodworking for, I don't know, probably 10 years. To me, it's just like skating. You can always learn a new trick or learn a new way to like build a table or a piece of furniture, right? Whatever I make furniture wise, that money goes towards more concrete. So I take my one passion and give it to my dream. Even there, I was like, I was pushing it. Did you see that? So this is one of the reasons why they call me alien. So my hand, just keep an eye on this finger. I'm not gonna cheat. And then, <laughs> this is the best part. Oh. <laughs> My friend Josh even passed away and he'd always told me that he wanted to build like a peanut bowl in his backyard. I was like, if I ever get a house or property, I'm gonna build a bowl and thinking about doing a peanut bowl. And then I was like, no, he gave so much love to so many people. and and to shape it like a heart, talk to transition. Hey, we designed this amazing shape that was like good for backside and frontside. Everyone can skate it, it's not too gnarly. To me, 
it was Josh that like started everything to make it happen, right? He brought so much positive energy to, to everywhere he went and he was never bombed, no negativity at all. And I think the world needs more of that. <laughs> I moved from Vancouver to the Kootenays because I was over like the city life. I knew that I would never be able to afford a house with the dream I had. Coming up here, there's freedom and trees, mountains, everything that I love. I knew once I found the property, no one's gonna f with us. Eugene Voikin, Josh is a really good friend. He grew up in this house as a kid. I rented the house for a year. So we inherited some money, so then we were able to buy this property. And then I didn't realize that Hicks on Sticks Tour in the 90s, there's footage of it on YouTube. At this house, building the ramps in the garage below, they brought those ramps around, toured, and then went back to Vancouver, and then those ramps started lease side. So it's like a huge circle. And then the people that helped me build the Love Bowl transition, built lease side as well. It was meant for this property to be what it is. Skateboarders' whole life were not respected by very many people. So when people come here, it's like a sanctuary and you can do what you want. No one judges you. This will be a Canadian monument. It'll never get taken down. I'm never going to sell this house. This is going to be the craziest part that anybody's ever seen. What's up guys, we're over here at uh, Vancouver Skate Plaza. It's the most infamous skate park in Canada. Waiting for all the homies to get here and then we're gonna shred the gnar. My name is Norma Ibarra. I'm originally from Mexico. I'm a skateboard photographer and I've been in Canada for about 12 years. I didn't plan to move here. It was a last minute decision. On a Friday, I came here on a Sunday. It was an opportunity for me to come to learn English. And while I got here, I was like, I'm not going back. I was kind of tired of everything that was happening back home and I needed a change. I ended up staying here, started a career from scratch. My mom gifted me her camera when I was like 15. And I was always the person with the camera. But when I moved here, I was like, wow, it's so beautiful here. Like, I would love to take photography more, more seriously. I earned a scholarship in digital communications, and that led me to my dream job at that time, doing social media, which was Hootsuite, that is like three blocks from Antisocial. I was like, oh, I want to skateboard because back in the day in Mexico, I wanted to do it, but my mom wouldn't allow it, and there wasn't skate shops in my city. I felt it wasn't for me. I went to the shop, and I noticed that the owner was a woman, Michelle, and she recommended to join a Facebook group and I started skateboarding and at the age of 31. Skateboarding took over and I was already taking pictures so like I noticed no one was taking photos of my community, my new skateboarding community, so I started taking photos of all of my friends. And some of them were like up and comers women skateboarders and that kind of led to where I'm at because I focused a lot of my photography to showcasing women and marginalized communities, queer community. Like that's been my mission for the last five years. Being a woman photographer in the skate industry is challenging. Um, there's a lot of barriers. I'm passionate about it and 
I try to stay happy and focus on what matters and focus on helping my community. But it's not easy to make the media understand that representation matters despite your level. A lot of people are fighting for this or are working towards it so that everything can evolve. I think we're getting there slowly and I think there's still a lot of work to do, but it's getting better. <laughs> I want to see equity when it comes to representation, payment. Like I want to look at a magazine and I want to see more women, more people of color, more trans skaters. Like I think a good starting point will be to listen to them and to learn about the experience of minority groups and marginalized communities. So to be there in every single part of the industry, not just uh, using as a token, you know, like I think they need to be included in every step of the way and in every part of the industry. I got one sandwich and one pizza for everyone. Mitch joined us earlier in the Steady Pushing series, but we figured we'd wait until we got back to Vancouver where he lives to tell his story. My name is Mitch Barrett, and I'm from a suburb town outside of Ottawa called Alfred, Ontario. I've been skateboarding for 24 years, since I was nine years old. Leafing the ledge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been living in Vancouver for five years now. I left Ottawa spontaneously, just threw everything in my car. I just drove with no plans, with like $400 in my pocket, and just ended up staying in Vancouver. It was definitely hard growing up with the challenges that I had as a kid. Kids at school didn't know what was going on with my voice and all they did was make fun of me, mock me. Like They were like scared of me. They didn't even want to sit beside me. It made me hate school. I just felt alone and it just made me never really want to be there. My treehouse was like half a kilometer from my house. It was like 10 feet above the ground and we just hung out there all the time. And it was kind of like a clubhouse, you know. When I was eight years old, my friend had an idea of like going to make a fire at the treehouse. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, like, let's go. He pulled out a, like a water bottle, like full of gasoline. I'm like, oh, whoa, okay. So he started the fire and he was on one side and I was on the other side. And he took the water bottle full of gas, sprayed it through the fire and all over me and it made me completely on fire. I have scars all over my body. I was like trying to get it out. He was just standing there like doing nothing and as soon as I got it out, I was like, my first instinct, run. I ran home, I saw my mom on the porch. I was like, mom, help. And I collapsed on the floor and I, I woke up nine months later. She begged the doctors to do one more operation because they kept trying and trying and trying. And they told my mom, like, it's not fair for Mitch. And the last try, the, the operation worked. I couldn't talk. I didn't talk for months. I was supposed to be a mute. I'm not even supposed to have a voice. So the fact that I'm able to even talk right now is a miracle. My mom saved my life. After the operation, like, I was in a coma for nine months. I stayed at the hospital. I was there probably for a whole year. As soon as I got back home, I came home to a big pile of toys. The toy that caught my attention was a skateboard. And that's pretty much exactly when I started skateboarding. It was such a hard time for me to be around kids that make, they were making fun of me. I, I got so sick of it. I was like, okay, skateboarding is a way out. 
and it helped me to make friends. I made all my friends from skateboarding. Who is this good mother <laughs> Where are we, Mitch? <laughs> skateboarding saved my life, you know? Skateboarding for so long now that when I don't skate, I don't really feel like myself. I feel the need to always stay involved, whether it's fixing spots or filming people. That's what keeps me going and motivated. It feels so good to bring back some old iconic spots. There's no better feeling. Get the spot back to life. Smells so butters, G. Get all the harder, the more harder, the better. Yeah, man, this whole trip has been so sick, honestly. I cannot thank you enough again, Mitch, for not only talking to me about your story, but also just like showing us around in Vancouver, fixing up some spots for us, being the absolute goat. This whole trip it means a lot. It's my pleasure, man. I thought I could finally get my story out there, you know? Like, needs to be heard, you know? People should know what you've been through and see how motivated you are still to this day. It's a uh, it's very inspiring. After almost a month of being on the road, I feel like we deserve a day off. Some friends told us about this water ramp outside of Squamish, so we're going to check it out for a change of scenery. I don't know if you are, but I am. I'm like kind of scared. Dude, it's like a 40 foot drop in the water. From my hometown to the west coast, this is an unforgettable trip. And thanks to the viewers for following along. It's nothing but love. Peace. Baby.